Wow, this is one of Jesus' difficult teachings. You know, we hear about them and, and we have from this teaching, this idea of a discipleship that is so, so hard. When you think of discipleship on this first Sunday in Lent, what do you think of? What image comes to mind? And I think for many of us, this idea of take up your cross and follow me that Jesus says in uh, Matthew, you know, he said to the disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must, must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. And the same way he talks about that, you know, we see this image, right? This image that you see on your screen of Jesus or us even under this enormous cross. And I want to talk to you about what discipleship is and how it is both incredibly hard and incredibly easy. This Sunday, this idea of Lent, these 40 days, is a season of preparation renewal. We'll talk about it all the time. And it really is an alignment for us to do discipleship. And first, I want to talk to you about what discipleship isn't. Discipleship isn't a program, though we have discipleship programs. It's not an inclination. It's not a feeling. What discipleship is, is a way we align our lives to be transformed. You know, discipleship in that way is very easy and very hard. Why? Well, part of the reason, the most important thing we can do, kind of like putting two bricks of Lego together. You know, if you put the two, you know, ends that have little bumps on them, trying to put them together, it doesn't work. You got to, you know, there's a certain way to put it together. And for us, often we try to put the bricks together differently. And that's what makes it difficult because discipleship, the first step is we have to give up control. I got to ask a question. Who likes not to be in control here? You know, or better yet, for those of you uh, who like to drive in LA, like I don't, uh, I like to use the imagery of driving because driving, you know, I, I'll be honest, I enjoy driving most of the time. I do. Uh, I don't like sitting in the passenger seat or worse yet, as I was talking to my son, sitting in the back seat, right? I want to be in the driver's seat. Why? I like control. It's the same reason I like to be, have the remote control for the TV in my hand. No one else is my remote control. But the problem of Christianity is that Jesus says, I want to drive. You know, have you, have, you see, have you seen the old bumper sticker? I haven't seen it recently because I think people finally got the idea that my navigator, my passenger, you know, next to me is Jesus. Have you seen that? And I never liked it because theologically, if you look deeply into it, no, you're the passenger. The person in charge is Jesus. Or God, he wants the keys. He wants the remote. He wants to take control. And that's hard for us, right? You know, Matthew points out, whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for mine sake will find it in Matthew 10. He says in John 12, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. It's hard because discipleship is incredibly hard because we don't want to give up any control. It's so hard. Surrender to God. You've, seen, you've heard the phrase, surrender to God. Raise the white flag. Give up. You know, I, I, I grew up. I'm a competitor. I love to play games. I'm like... I've afflicted my children with this too. I kept score in games that there was no score. I remember seeing this in my son when he was playing T-ball. 
he would tell me, you know, T-ball, you don't have a score in, in T-ball. But Christian's like, we won, Dad. We scored more runs. He knew exactly what the score was. I think most of our lives, we know it too. I knew exactly where I stood in place at school. I knew I was like the second or third person, you know, GPA wise. I knew it's just who I'm wired for. And I think all of us compete at some level. We want to be good. I look at the people in this church. We want to do well. We want, we want to be, you know, captains of our own destiny, right? That's what we hear from America. We want the Horatio Alger story where I am a self-made man or woman, which is all fallacy. It really is. I, if you point to any, quote, self-made man or woman, I will point you to all of the people who allowed them to succeed, who made it possible. And the most important person is God in the middle of that. You know, we can't will ourselves to victory. We need help. That's why, for me, I love sports. But the perfect sport for me to understand God and my Christian life is baseball. Baseball. Um, Yogi Berra had a, to, to, had a, for me, the phrase that, you know, guides my life. He's, and I think epitomizes this term. He said, when you're trying to hit a baseball, try easier. Right? When you try to play, try to play Baseball, anyway, try easier. What does that mean? Well, you, when you go step to the, blit, to the plate and try to hit that raw, round sphere that's coming to you at entirely too fast a speed, the worst thing you can do is tense. The worst thing you can do is think about the three times you've missed that ball in that game. The worst thing you can do is wor worry about the slump or how you look what you have to do is just swing and relax. And for us to be disciples of God, surrendering, allowing God to be in control equals freedom. Life works better when Jesus is driving. You receive power and freedom through surrender. It's an idea that we talked about last week and this week. I think it's the idea that Bill Bright underlined this this movement, this thing that he gave to the 12 steps, the AA movement, we have to understand some really, really simple principles. So how do we do this? And I'll steal liberally. Well, first is we have to realize that we are powerless and our lives are unmanageable. Could any of us control the spread of pan the pandemic this last year? Did any of us cause it? Could we have done anything about it as it affects the globe? And I hate to tell you this, no matter how much you think you're in control, you can't. I couldn't prevent, you know, my spraining an ankle playing basketball, or I should say, when I tried to play basketball. I can't, you know, last night, we went to, you know, El Pollo Loco to get some, some dinner. And we're, you know, and I've been thinking about this and we ran into this guy, you might've heard of him, Magic Johnson in the parking lot. And he was going in and we didn't, re we didn't recognize him until after the fact they were driving away. And they were going, my son's like, dad, that was Magic Johnson. I should have gotten a picture. And I go, yeah, you should have. But we didn't realize it at the time. But the thing I, I thought about was, you know, I can't, I can't affect the fact that I, am, I was only 5'8" small Asian guy, there's no way I could have become any taller. It just doesn't happen. We are powerless on, and it can't manage every aspect of our lives. We have to acknowledge that and our lives get better when we do. The second step, unlike the 12 steps, we only have three. We have to come believe a power greater than ourselves can restore us. Just like the 12 steps folks have to lean into the fact that there's a greater power we have to lean into the fact that we have a greater power and his name is god and jesus and the holy spirit and that we can be restored to who we're supposed to be through the power of god in our lives that's how we do discipleship we don't do it by you know earning it we don't do it 
by all this repetition. I mean, those things help us, but we do it by leaning into what God wants us to be and allowing God to work in our hearts. And it all begins with the final step that we have to make the, a decision to turn our will and our life over lives, you know, over to the care of God. It's the idea that we put God first and listen to God. And like a lot of things Bill Bright got right, we have to do this every day. I get up, I like getting up early or at least earlier than the rest of my family because it gives me a moment or moments to sit with my coffee, very important, and sit with my coffee and just say to God, how do you want to use me today? You know, before I turn on, turn the email on, before I, you know, turn the radio on, before I listen to a podcast, before I open the paper, before I do any of those things, the first thing I do is make that decision each and every day to say, how do you want to guide me? And that's What's so easy about it? I mean, there are a lot of pieces to becoming and understanding what it means to be a disciple, looking for mentors, going to Bible study classes. All of the things help in our journey and understanding and listening and understanding how to listen for God. But the first and most powerful thing we can do is to acknowledge our powerlessness and our need for God each and every day. And the more competent, the more affluent, the more tools you have, the harder it is. And that's why, that's why Jesus says in this passage, you've got to hate. Right? Look, look at it. you got to hate your family, your mother, father, your children, your brothers, sisters, your, even your own life, if you want to be a disciple. He doesn't, you know, he uses that exaggeration here. He doesn't really mean you got to hate your kids. Though there are days when I want to donate my children. I don't know what he's talking about is I love my children. I'd lay my life down for my children. But I've got to even put God at a higher plane. I've got to be able to lay down my life for God too. But more than that, I got to lay down my control, which is even harder for me. Take it from a control freak. I even packed my own parachutes when I could because I really don't want to have the riggers, the guys who pack my parachutes when I jumped out of airplanes, to pack them because I see what they do on Sunday nights before they have to go into work on Monday. And I want to I don't want a Monday morning parachute, right? But I got to give that control to God. I've got to give up. And that's both incredibly easy and incredibly hard. Look, we have three options in this whole process of discipleship. We can live with a rebellious heart toward God and just do it structurally. We can you know, show up on Sunday mornings. We can give some money to church. We can even do mission trips and stuff. But if we don't give up that rebellious heart toward God, it's going to be a problem. Or we can live with a divided heart. You know, We can say, you know, this much to God, and this much to me and my family. Or we can live with a surrendered heart. God wants everything in all of us. And it's going to be hard, but it's easy to do. But I want to leave you on this cartoon I found this week that I thought, are you God's servant or are you God's advisor? Right? This idea. Yeah, you can give him the wheel. And look, we're all going to be in the situation trying to tell God what to do. And it doesn't really work. God's, God's driving. And it works best when we acknowledge that. And when we do, we enjoy this freedom and this clarity. I've got to tell you, uh, and I can go into this and I won't because I don't want you to be here till midnight. But this last year for me has been a real test of this. I didn't expect to be here 
In fact, along the process of becoming your pastor, I had some real doubts and some real opportunities. But I listened to God on this journey, and I got to tell you, wherever he's taking me, I am so glad he brought me to Encino and to each one of you. Because that's the joy of it. Through all of the junk and the challenges and the joys of this last year, one of the never-ending joys is knowing that God has guided me here, and I'm so thankful. And I know that for you and each one of you, if you let him, let Jesus drive, let God, his presence, overwhelm you in this journey and just give control up to God, he will put you in the place where she can, she can help you in every possible way to become the person you're supposed to be. Be in that presence of the Holy Spirit today. And know that God only wants the good for you. Let's go to God in prayer right now. Oh, precious Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you.